Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. So today I wanted to pretty much do a video on resource management, which is pretty much managing your gear and items in the sense of building and making it interesting to build and to farm and all that stuff. And this is some of this is one of the things that I do that I actually like about the division game. And yes, the RNG is unforgiving. And it's really difficult to find the items that you actually want. But there's something about making sense of the RNG that kind of makes it a, a much more interesting process to get there. Now, I can understand that, you know, as a looter shooter, we should be able to have more access to uh, the loot that we desire to build with. But you know how RNG is. It's designed to, you know, limit you and keep you playing. Now, that may sound like a bad thing until you find out that people play Dark Souls and Sekiro and then we are just farming for gear and somehow our lives are supposed to be miserable. I know, right? And so if you look at things in perspective, one of the best things that you I think you can do if you're trying to make sense of the RNG is you want to first, you, you know, create your build, go ahead and build. Um, if you find a build on the Internet that you like, you can copy that build. But one of the biggest frustrations is you're probably not going to get the items for that build exactly how the person you're watching the video from has their build. So you might have to be you have to you might have to make to do with a limited uh, version of the build or some kind of a prototype. And then you build from there. But one of the best tools that I, I use, and this is pretty much the first thing that you can use to actually understand and make sense of the RNG, is you use a tool that helps you to pick and choose every single item that makes your gear what it is and makes your build what it is. And so I use the Vision Builder. It was developed by somebody uh, that is from the Reddit community, I think. So whoever you are, thumbs up to you. I know Reddit gets a very uh, fun light, but this is a great tool that came out of there. So I use this to just spread out all the stats and look at everything and how it needs to go. And from here, I can pick and choose my dream build. And so this puts me to the second thing about making sense of the RNG, which is doing a systematic um, sequence on how your build is going to look. So you start out with your weapons, primary, secondary, sidearm, and then moving on to your gear. And so little by little, you're able to put together something that you want. And trust me, the reason many of us that play PVE build is because that is pretty much our end game. Our end game is to get the min max build for the game. Now, if you're a PVP player, then that is definitely you're looking at us like we're crazy. And, you know, rightly so we're looking at you like you're crazy. Like, why would you want to go shoot other people in the dark zone? So that's usually how the game sort of goes. Now, for those of you who are both PVE and PVP and, you know, like my buddy Shade, whatever, you still want to get a good build nonetheless. And so this is something that really does help. And then another thing, too, that will reduce and cut down the frustration is doing this will help you find alternatives to your build. So let's go through this build that I'm working on right now. And this is a build that's a work in progress because it was an AR crit chance build that I've been working on that I abandoned, but I left it in my loadout. And so little by little, I've been looking at the pieces and looking at different aspects of the build that will make things work and I'm ad identifying aspects that I think can be better. Like right now, if you look at my AR, my AR has um, pretty much very good talent. It's not uh, it's not rolled. It's got stop, drop and roll um, Allegro and it's got Ranger. If I wanted to change Ranger to something, I can do that. If I wanted Allegro to be extra, I can do that. But why would I do that? All I need to do is farm for that sturdy uh, five, uh, five, five, six, uh, magazine, which is something as well that I can do. And so I'm looking at the other aspects. My chatterbox is a low gear score, but I don't use the chatterbox for anything other than its talent. So the blabber mouth and the, whatever the box magazine or whatever it is. Um, and so that's pretty much, um, well, did I say the, the box magazine? I don't even use that stuff either. And so that's all I'm using it for. I'm using it for its holster talent. So yeah. And so I look at the deficiencies in my build and I see that this mask has a very huge deficiency. And the deficiency is that my damage to elites is over here. My mask is pretty low and my, my crit chance is also pretty low because now I know, which is the next thing, 
I know now that the maximum rolls for critical chance on a mask is about 10%. So I'm at 5%. So my build is not leveraging about that mask is about 50% short on what it can do for um, crit chance. And then also the max uh, maximum roll for a mask is about 50% short on my mask. And then I also have hard hitting here as well, which I had to actually roll on there. So that's shown me my limitation for that mask. So my mask is about 50% deficient in what I want it to be, or let me say, yeah, it, it's about 50% deficient in the, the stat roles that I want it to be. And so now I know my objective is to find me a mask, whether it be Richard Kaiser or something else that has a high crit chance or a high damage to elite role or a high, um, or whatever it is that I want. And then that's one of the things I'm going to be looking for. Okay. So now, sure. I need a mask that has these. And so one of the biggest problems is I'm probably not going to get a mask like this, right? Because it takes a, a while to get the items that you need. And so what I can do is to try to start looking for alternatives when I set my goals, because one of the things about farming and a lot of people say there's really nothing to grind or farm for. Well, if you make yourself a goal to farm and grind for, then you have something to grind for. If you make multiple goals, then I think you increase your, your, you increase your chances of actually hitting those goals and actually finding things that you're looking for. So the Richard and Kaiser set here on my build what does it really grant me? It grants me 10% hazard protection, which is nice, but can I do without it? And if my answer is yes, then I can say, okay, sure. If I find any other mask that would do this for me and give me damage to elites, critical hit chance and hard hitting, then I'll be looking for that. So it doesn't have to be a Richard Kaiser mask. It just becomes the other mask. And I can write that down depending on how, you know, uh, in depth you want to go with stuff like this. I write stuff like this down all the time. And you can see I've tried different alternatives here. This mask has got more crit chance, less damage to elites. This mask has got more damage to elites. It's got health, but it doesn't have the uh, hard hitting talents, which 29% is not even the best. So these are my limitations. So making sense of the RNG the biggest thing is actually you understanding and knowing the limitations that you have as a player and continuing to farm for more and more, uh, you know, items in order to be able to replace your existing gear. Another thing, again, that I've seen as a big limitation is my Wyvern backpack, which does not allow for me to do a lot here because this Wyvern backpack is the trapezius go bag which only allows for me to uh, roll one passive talent and one active talent. Uh, and so in, in that sense, I have just very few of what I need. I have just a little bit of critical hit damage. When the maximum critical hit damage rolls, I think on a backpack are actually really much higher than, you know, three and a half percent. And then you also have nine and a half percent crit chance on here when I can get a lot more than that if I was if I found myself a good backpack. And so these are some of the limitations that I'm going to have. But then I look at my chest piece and the chest piece that I have, I have a good chest piece. It's got five and a half percent weapon damage. I think I can get a lot more than that. And so I'm looking at this other backpack here that I can transfer that talent on here. And I'm walking through everything that I that I actually own. And so in doing this, I'm not only able to pick and choose. I'm not only able to systematically build in an organized way. I'm able to find an uh, to find an alternative to my build if I sit down and think carefully about it. And I'm able to provide um, myself an objective to farm for, because if I want to do a critical hit chance build, there are different ways to do it. I mean, I don't have to have three wyverns. I can use some of the Douglas Harden as well. And Douglas Harden does a good job in giving me some of the uh, attributes for crit chance if I were to run the third one and critical hit damage if I did two pieces. So there are, my, there are multiple ways to do crit builds that will actually be beneficial for me if I did that. And I understand now that if I'm looking at my chest piece, I have armor, I have health. It might not be ideally the chest piece that works out for me. I might have to move to another chest piece that has maybe some critical hit chance. This has got decent health. Um, I might have to find another chest piece to get armor on there or whatever. And so this is how you actually walk yourself through getting the build that you want. Now, another thing I have to say is that getting the build that you want is a matter of a process. 
you're probably not going to be able to build your ideal build on the very first day. Once you understand this concept that it might take you about maybe a week, maybe even a month um, to be able to get your complete build, then you'll be able to understand how difficult it is building in the division two is this is where the game's difficulty is the difficulty is not in, in being able to complete missions we can do that all day long we can complete whatever mission we want to complete save the raid um but when it comes to the game's difficulty it is in the build and it's in the rng and in understanding this you're able to understand that okay my build right now is not in a good place this is what I need to do to get it to where it goes. And so I have an eye and I'm looking out for, you know, items that work in my favor. I'm looking out for items that have critical hit chance, items that have critical hit damage and looking at those numbers and understanding also what the numbers are actually at when they're maxed. So if I find uh, I, I found a, ch a what is it, a chess piece the other day, purple chess piece, it had 15 percent weapon damage. You know, and I was excited because I'd never seen any chess piece with 15% weapon damage. But using this um, tool here, we understand that the max is about 18%. So if I'm running around and I find a purple item that has 18% weapon damage, a lot of people complain about the purples. But to be very honest, it's the purples that actually roll some of the really high stats that we see in the game. So as much as a lot of people like to, you know, you know, hit on these purples and say, ah, these purples are very annoying when they're dropping. They are actually some of the items that you need to be looking out for because they can definitely change the game for your build. So this is just my attempt to kind of put out how I work with the RNG, um, how I actually look at resources, how I actually look at items in the game in order to make my farming experience. Yeah, there it is. Oh, sorry. It was 15 and percent headshot damage. I found not uh, not weapon damage, uh, but if I found it on a purple item, I have not seen this stat on any yellow item. And I have just in my stash alone, I have 42 chess pieces. OK, and then in my backpack, I have at least about 12. Oh, no, 20. So this is just with one character. I have 60 chess pieces. And if you go to my other character, I probably have another 10, 15 chess pieces. And in that mix, I can only find one that has um, such a high headshot damage that it's really, really scary to see how difficult the RNG can be. And so I guess this goes to show that the developers probably need to improve the RNG and make it more relevant to us because over the course of the division one, the RNG was just as brutal as this. It was very difficult to find things that you wanted. But over the course of the game, the developers from the state of the games, from feedback from the community, the developers eventually walked the game through making the RNG to be more relevant and making sense. So in the sense of the attributes within the game, things like this, what the developers just went ahead to do was make these things show up in mods. And so you were not limited to these rolling on the gear. If you understand what I mean, maybe they'll make like, you know, they had major and minor attributes. And so minor attributes were actually transferred into being mods where you could use those mods to then finish up your build and make it min maxed. And then we also had the recalibration station. So these are things that can be done to actually make our builds get to where they need to be. And I think the developers know the developers are addressing the recalibration station uh, inquiry from the community, even though they've said they don't have any plans for it. I think they need to prioritize that as a plan. OK, so back again to the five things before I leave you guys is the first thing you need to understand when it comes to making sense of the RNG is that it helps you understand your limitations. The second thing is that it helps you pick and choose. Third is that it helps you build systematically and in an organized way. The fourth thing is that it helps you to find alternatives, because if you lock yourself down into one tunnel vision item, you're probably not going to find that item. So if you find alternatives, it will definitely make it an easier run for you. And then the, fi the final aspect of making sense of the RNG is that it provides objectives so that you have goals to farm for. So if you have multiple alternatives, you have five, six items that you want, then you're able to say, OK, these are the items that I want and I'm going to spend time looking for them because this is where the difficulty is. And every game has got to have its difficulty spike. And unfortunately, this is where our difficulty spike is. Should it be here? That's another question for another video. All right. I'm going to get out of y'all's hair. Thank you very much for your time and your audience for walking with me through this nerdy video, if it was nerdy at all. And if you enjoyed the content, let me know in the comment section below. And I guess I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.